Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be part two of the epic battle between me and Steve from Tronix Fix. I'm from the UK, he's from US. He's a professional, I'm an amateur, and we've both got 150 UK pounds, so that equates to 200 US dollars, to try and fix five items bought and sold on eBay. Whoever makes the most money at the end of it wins. Now hopefully you've already seen part one in which I go into more detail about the rules and stuff, but basically in part one I bought this little beauty here, which was 40. This is a, a Hornby train. This is Duck from Thomas and Friends. And then uh, I managed to fix it up. Actually, it just needed a really good clean, so uh, it was like the contacts weren't making. So uh, I've put it on eBay, and amazingly, it's actually going for quite a bit of money. So at this moment in time, there's five days left, and it's going for 39 UK pounds. Now, I'm not sure if this is worth 39 UK pounds. I'm wondering whether these are kind of sympathy bids to try to get me in with a fighting chance of beating Steve uh, from Tronics Fix. So I really don't know, maybe it is worth it, but I'm thinking maybe people are just trying to help me out and maybe help out the UK as well. But either way, it's still going at this moment in time for 39, 39 pounds. So there's definitely a little bit of profit in it. And with five days to run, it might go up to 40 pound or 41 or two pound, in which case then there's gonna be a bit, not much because of eBay and PayPal fees, etc. But still, this is definitely gonna be in profit. Now, Steve had a lovely first fix. He got a PlayStation 4 Slim and it said it had a HDMI uh, problem, but it didn't. It was basically uh, a part of the disk drive had fallen down or maybe it was assembled wrongly you know maybe somebody tried to fix it and they did it wrong previously but either way luckily for him he didn't have to spend any money so it looks like he got a bit of a bargain on his first one so now i'm on to my second one i haven't sold this one yet it will sell but i haven't got the money for it so again you've got to limit what you know i've got to limit what i buy early on in the competition as it gets towards the maybe fourth and fifth item, then maybe I can start really upping the stakes. So in this video today, you're gonna to see the second trying to fix of this series. And uh, then in part three, I will obviously let you know what this went for and also what the bids are on the second item, if it can be fixed. So sit back and enjoy and let the battle continue. Okay, so here we have the second item in the competition with Steve. So uh, let me get straight into it and show you what it is. Ta da! There we go. A PlayStation Vita, and this is the version one, so this is the one with the OLED screen. Now, I believe the only problem with this is the left analog stick. Can you see that basically? it doesn't spring back. So it springs back that way, but not when you do left, it stays over. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be a relatively easy fix because in this instance, I have taken apart a few of these before because I think I bought about three or four of them a while ago, I got a real good deal. This was uh, long before I was doing the videos on uh, YouTube. And uh, yeah, basically, from memory, I haven't taken them apart in quite a few years, but from memory, they're, well actually, I think I did replace the battery on one of these in a video not that long ago. But yeah, sorry, from memory, things are modular, so, these uh, analog sticks, once you get into it, you've got to undo a few ribbon cables and stuff, but once you get into it, it's just two screws holding them in and a ribbon cable. So, I have already got spares for the PlayStation Vita, so I'm hoping it's gonna be a really easy fix. Now, ideally, I would just like to fix the one that's here, but that might not be, might not be possible. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't spring back. You know, from memory, I can't remember the, I don't know if I've ever taken apart an actual analog stick to see what it's like. But this definitely hasn't got any uh, spring back there. And it's quite powerful there. So uh, yeah, what I'll probably do is swap out the analog stick and then I might take this one apart just to see what has actually broken in it because I can't remember how, you know, where it gets its spring from. So uh, yeah, so I'm hoping that this one is gonna be repairable. Now I'm not gonna do a massive test on it, I'm just gonna take the seller's word for it, but what I will do is, just turn it on now, I will uh, take it apart, fix it, and then of course I will do all the testing on it because this is gonna be sold on eBay. Now he did mention that there was three marks on the screen and yeah, I can see them up here. It looks like, uh, you can see them just up on that bit there, yeah? One, two, three. But they're not bad at all. 
Well, I don't think they're bad. Now, with this one, because it's the, the version 1, it's got, I love, the screen is so nice on this. I know there's not a lot of love for the PlayStation Vita, but what you've got to admit is that it just looks like a quality piece. You know, it just, you can tell that they spent money on this when this came out originally, and that screen is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Right, okay, so let's get straight into it. I'm going to show you what I paid for it, and then uh, we're going to take it apart and get that analog stick swapped over. Right, so this is the list in here. As you can see, I paid uh, £35 for it and £2.50. So uh, in total, that is £37.49. So it wasn't cheap, but I'm hoping that once it's fixed that it might go for, you know, between £60 and £70. We'll have to see. But if you have a look here, it says Sony PlayStation Vita, Crystal Black Handheld System 40 Control Stick. Uh, it's got a few pictures and it just says here the console runs as it should however the left control stick has lost its spring back feature no longer automatically returns from the left position unless moved however the control stick does function as normal there was also three small indents present to the screen so they're the marks see these pictures he's shown them in the pictures uh the indents can be seen when the screen is on however they will they they will not really affect any game. I don't think they're. I don't, personally don't think they're bad at all. So uh, yeah, in this one here, not really, not not bad a price. You know, these are quite expensive. I know if you were to go into CEX and buy one, I think they're over eighty pounds. So uh, yeah, not uh, not a bad price. The problem is though, what really whacks up the price is because you have to buy the memory cards for them, and the memory memory cards are expensive. So. Unfortunately, there's no memory cards in here. You can get just cheap ones for like uh, under £10, but I, I, they don't actually hold much uh, much storage. So that was the kind of downside of this system, is that they force you to buy their own proprietary memory cards, and they were expensive. Right, okay, let's get straight into this, take it apart, and hopefully, for once, I may have an easy fix. Right, these are just normal crosshead screws on the back. So from memory, you don't need any specialist equipment. There's no like special screwdrivers or anything you need to get into the uh, PlayStation Vita. Okay, you've got to be very careful when you take the back off because there is ribbon cables in here that's still connected just down at the bottom here. So you have like a uh, battery connector and also the ribbon cable, I think, for the... Maybe the rear camera and also the touchpad at the back. So let me just get some tweezers and take them out. I'm going to disconnect the battery first. There we go. And now this ribbon cable. I'm just going to do the ribbon cable with my uh, nail because it just, from memory, just pops up really easy. There we go. Okay, so you can see that wasn't too hard to do. So that's the back part out. Put that to one side. That's how easy it is to change the battery, you see, on these. Just this bit here, so then you just need to undo a couple of screws, change out the battery. So it's not a big, not a big deal. Right, so it's the uh, left one we're dealing with here. So it's this side here. Do you know what I'm wondering? Is I'm, I'm wondering whether it just needs uh, a clean. Whether? No, I don't think so. Because even if you just do it a tiny bit, it doesn't spring back. Right. Okay. So it's this side here we want to get to. Right, so I'm going to have to undo a few ribbon cables because I need to take this section out here and I've also got to take off, well there you go, that's popped out already I've got to take off the uh, shoulder button there as well Right, okay, so I think we'll start by undoing the ribbon cables See that, I just slid that up there, so now I'm just going to remove that one, like that, I'm going to put that back down so I don't knock it because those things are easy to break Again, that one comes up. Take that out. Close that one. Looks like there's a bit of dirt on that. Right, there's just a little ribbon cable up here as well, just for the, the shoulder button. I 
Now to remove this there's just a few little clips, there's a little clip here and I think here as well. I'm just going to move that clip up, that one up there, hopefully this should start to ease out now. There we go. Any more clips? No. Right, okay, so again you could see if this was faulty it's a nice easy thing to replace, you know, if you had uh, a problem with your, uh, your D-pad for example. And now we have access to our analog stick just here. Really straightforward. So let's pop this one out, get a new one in, and then we can take this one apart just out of curiosity to see what the problem is. Remember, I'm selling this, so I don't want I don't want to put in a product that can fail again. You know, if I was just to fix this up, then it might fail again a week down the line. So I'd rather replace it with a different working analog stick. Right, so this is the one here. Yeah, we'll take that apart and see what uh, see what the problem could be. Okay, so on my normal videos, that's what I would have done. I would have taken that apart and tried to fix that. And I still, I promise you, I will take it apart. But remember, because I'm selling this on, because that's the idea of this competition, I will be replacing this uh, this analog stick. I mean, there is a chance that there might be a slightly bad connection in uh, in this bit here. If there was a bit of rust on the actual you know, or a bit of tarnish on the ribbon cable that went in here, then there's a chance that the contact in here is not good. But uh, we won't know that until we put it put it back together. Mind you, around here feels uh, feels clean. There was a bit of grime. It all looks uh, it all looks a nice tidy one. Right, okay, let's, uh, this is one of my spares that I had from before. So this one here has got a cracked screen. So what I did is I used this to fix up pretty much all the other PlayStation Vitas that I had. So this is the analog stick here we're going to be using. And as you can see, this one is springing back fine. So I presume it's going to be working fine. This is the same model as well. It's not the, the latest slimmer version. This is also... Uh, the original one with the uh, OLED screen. Just looking, this one's got a slight bit of nail varnish on it. I remember that one of the ones that I got was covered, let's get rid of those screws, was covered in uh, nail varnish, and I think it was this one here. So what I'm going to do is, as far as I know, these are the same on both sides. If you have a look, they look like it's the same analog stick for both sides. So this one here looks to be in slightly better condition, so I think I'm going to use the one from this side. Clean. I'm going to get a cotton wool bud to clean it up before I put it in there. Okay, so that's cleaned up now, so I'm going to pop it back in. Right, so that's clipped back in, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ease the ribbon cables all back into their places. Right, so that's all them done up. Now we just need to put the shoulder button back in, so I'm going to place that there. I'm just going to copy what's happened on this side, so it looks like it goes this way round. And let's see now, oh it just grabs the ribbon cable there and slots on there. Okay, it really is, honestly, it's such a nice thing to work on. I remember working on these before and uh, they just go together so well. I mean it really does look like I, mean, I don't know anything about the design of them, but to me, it looks like it's really well made. So even as a kind of, uh, even first time doing it, the only awkward bit is working with the ribbon cables. But if you're just really careful, then I would say that most people would be able to change most parts on this, uh, of these without, uh, without too much hassle. One thing I've never done is I've never changed out a cracked screen. All I've done is kind of replaced the whole front section. So for example, you know, you know, on this one here, I would just replace this whole bit here. So I don't know how hard it would be to actually get the screen the screen out. 
but everything else really is you know easy to easy to change right okay so that's basically uh, that bit done there so I now need to pop this back on do up the screws and hopefully it will be a working Vita let's spin this round I'm gonna do the ribbon cable up first sorry not the ribbon cable I'm gonna do this little connection up here first this is just a push connection and then I'll uh, do the battery last okay so that's just popped in just like that Okay, so that just pushes down, and again the battery just clips into place. Like that. Okay, so they're both in now. Okay, I'm happy with that. Well, we just need to do up the screws now, and then uh, we'll give it a test. Right, okay. Yeah, that feels right. So let's turn it on and I'll show you a nice quick way to do a, to do a test on these because there's an app on here that you can use. So I know that all those things are working now. So now what I have to do is just go to home and uh, let's just actually see if the analog stick's working. There you go. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give that a good clean up and I'm gonna test out the games in it, test out the memory card. And uh, yeah, hopefully then uh, it will be uh, it will be all okay. I've got to test out the headphone headphone jack as well, uh, and then I'll show it to you at the very end, all clean and stuff. And then obviously, if you would like to buy it, then you can check out the eBay link in the description down below. Right, let's turn it off for the time being. And let's have a look at this little analog stick. See if we can work out what's wrong with it. Now the good thing about it is that because this is already broken we can be a little bit rough with it. Right, so it's not going back that way. Okay, so I've taken it apart again, and you've seen I put plastic weld on it, and uh, it's still it's still not doing it, and it's stiff now. So I'm 100% sure that that was the problem, but uh, obviously it needs to be perfect, doesn't it? Because now I've made it too thick, and it's just kind of you know wanting to stay in most locations now. Even down there, it's wanting to stay. It still works fine there, but not in those ones there so it is linked to do with that broken uh, broken plastic maybe it might have had could have had a drop and it might have whacked against this and then this uh, thumbstick would have hit against and snapped the plastic so at least I know what the problem is and I know how this has been put together now so to me it was definitely worth taking apart to actually you know find out why it was doing that but no, it's not going to be repairable unless you're to have a spare one of them. And you're not going to be able to buy spare ones of them because they're just going to sell the analog stick as a whole. 
So what I'm going to do now is just clean up the PlayStation Vita and then I'm going to uh, test out the games and stuff and uh, obviously I would have to deduct the price of the analog stick from the total profit. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Right, so I've been messing around with this for over an hour now and it all appears to be working fine. I've given it a good clean. It does attract fingerprints, so as soon as you clean it, it just gets dirty again. It isn't immaculate by any means. There's quite a few scratches and bashes around the place. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it's a used PlayStation Vita, but it still works fine. So, uh, those scratches on the screen, I'll show you in a minute on Ridge Racer, but you, you can notice them. They're not. They're a little bit off-putting, if I'm honest with you. Like when you're when you're playing the game, if you're concentrating on the game, it's fine. But because they're on the surface of the screen, then they do catch your eye. You can just see them there now, and uh, they are distracting. So I wouldn't call them just a little scratch. They are out of the other PlayStation Vitas I've got. Some of them look more scratched up, but this looks more distracting because they're sort of definite little marks, and you can even feel them with your finger. They don't affect gameplay just visually affects it because your eye catches it. Now I tried to use a bit of the Meguiar's Plastic X on it. It didn't make a blind bit of difference because I presume they're too big of a kind of impact to fill up. So I think what's happened here is I think this has been dropped and I think it landed on the analog stick, made a little bit of damage on the screen and also you can see for example there's a mark there as well so it must have had a bit of an impact. But uh, yeah, so apart from those you know, imperfections, it is working good. Problem with it is there's no memory card. I've had to put a spare one in just to test it, so it definitely works. And uh, there's no power cable with it as well. So I'm charging up now. You can see it does charge, so the port at the bottom is working. But those are two things you're definitely going to have to buy before you do anything with it. So I am going to give it, make sure it's fully charged, but you need that memory card. Now, you can buy these cheap little power supplies. But these don't really work very well, and I'll tell you the reason why. These are only about £1.99. I got this from China. This will work fine, and it will charge it up if I plug it into my PC or my PlayStation 4, even though with my PlayStation 4, when I tried it just now, it keep, keeps on coming up with device not supported. But yeah, if I plug this in to this, for example, the GPD Pocket, it doesn't charge it. And also, if I plug it into an Android or Apple phone charger, this will not charge this either. Not quite sure why, but there must be something in here, the Sony one, that allows it to charge fine, but not when it comes to the cheaper one. So there must be some sort of communication with this thing here. So uh, that isn't just the fault of this PlayStation Vita. It happens on all the PlayStation Vitas that I've tried with these cheap leads. So if you're looking into getting a PlayStation Vita, either this one or another one, and you just get it on its own, then realistically you are gonna have to budget for a proper charger as well, and also, definitely a memory card because you need that to play the games uh, but yeah apart from that it all appears to be working good so let me just show you a bit of Ridge Racer and then we will finish up the video so if you have a look there you can see how nice the screen looks and uh, different views right okay so with this is all about the colors so if you look at the colors there the screen they, they must have spent a lot of money on this screen You can see it does look nice. So if you're interested in this particular one, I will leave the link in the description to the eBay listing. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll make my money back on it. Maybe I might make a little bit more. I have to take into account the cost of the analog stick, so I need to look into that. But with this one, really happy with it because I knew this was going to be an easy fix. I've had a few hard fixes recently, not just in this series. I mean, in you know my normal videos. So I kind of wanted something that I knew I was going to be able to do without a huge headache. And as soon as I seen this listing and they said that, I knew that it would just be a case of swapping that over and you've seen how easy it was. So it's a shame I couldn't get the other analog stick to work, but at least we now know what was the matter with it so again I've learned something so hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully this will uh, make me a little bit of profit to put towards the uh, the run in total and uh, please check out my other videos in this series and also Steve's videos from Tronics Fix as well and then after the five of them we'll see who will make the most money and will be victorious right take care now see you soon bye